All right, guys. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick video on uh, GME or GameStop. Uh, yeah, ticker symbol GME. Um, been a long time fan. I watched when that ran up. I'll never forget. My buddy called me. He's like, "Hey, did you hear about GameStop? You know, going up to four hundred dollars." And um, I won't forget looking at GameStop a couple months prior to that and seeing it even even earlier than that, seeing it at like four or five dollars. I'm like, what the heck? I've been a GameStop fan my, since I'm like 12 years old or 10. As soon as I could buy a gaming system, you know, which was an N64 or something, I was going to GameStop to buy it or a pawn shop. But after that, later on, all the consoles, all the games I bought, I always bought a GameStop. Um, so, and I still buy a GameStop. I just bought a PS4 Pro not too long ago. Paid for their handsome warranty. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll never forget looking at that share price down in the ditch like that. And then hearing months later that it's at $400 and I started researching on it. It just blew my mind. Um, and, uh, and then finding out that, you know, it was very likely that somebody had gotten their foot in a bear trap trying to short a bunch of stocks into oblivion uh, and the only way to really do that is is dilute the float synthetically which create fake shares and water it down it creates so many problems for a company pretty much they become the, a company that is has is at that low unless they're financially have some cash on hand they're going to end up diluting which helps the short thesis even more so it's this very self-destructive cycle and it's easy for shorts to win as long as they have the capital to maintain their positions uh, to the likelihood of the company coming back for something like that is just not very high and le <laughs> until we had DFV <laughs> it's like hey uh, I think something's going on here guys let's buy it <laughs> and I'm not telling anybody what to do and I, you know, he didn't say that. He was just like, I, "We're gonna." I'm. I, I. He personally made the decision to uh, do certain things with the stock. Um. So I, I won't put words in his mouth because I never. He never said that, but uh, he did make the position that <laughs> it was very heavily shorted, and for what reason? Along with a lot of other stocks, and AMC is along in that. Uh. So yeah. Then then we had the January run up. Uh, last January of 21 and, uh, and then it's been game on since then but the tried and true way to get shorters one of the ways to get short sellers out of your stock is to make them pay to short the stock which is to issue a dividend it makes their position shorting the stock painful because in, if they own the stock for the amount of or own hold the short position for the amount of time it takes to own, to get paid a dividend and they end up having to pay a dividend. They can short it intermittently but to take these huge long-term short positions which is what if you look at like a margin debt ratio they'll hold short positions for five or ten years in stocks. Just look at a margin debt chart. When the, when the stock market tanks you see the margin debt go down that's when you know that they're having to close out and cover their positions and it's cheap. Uh, there's no reason for them not to. So that's really, you'll see a lot of market cyclical cycles built off of margin debt. And it's, it's these are pretty much fabricated because they have to get out of position. So they'll just make some reason to crash the market. Um, once you start looking at it from that way, you realize that a lot of the stuff that we see that we think is haphazard is not. They already know about it. I'll just stop with that. But GameStop issued a, a uh, came out with an AK today. And I wanted to just pull that up. Because it's important to, and I was I was watching a bunch of commentary you know, on Reddit. They weren't talking about the shares outstanding, and that's important. Because if you read the 8K, they want to issue more shares in a dividend form on top of the shares already there, and it's a minimum of 300 million right here. And I'll read it. So GameStop announces plan to request a stockholder approval, and they have to get approval at the next meeting to issue the number of authorized shares from 300 million up to a billion 
and through some amendment in the company's policy uh, in the form of stock dividend and provide flexibility for future corporate needs. Also intends to request stockholder approval at the annual meeting for center plans to support future compensatory equity issuances. Uh, and then, yeah, they, they want to replace the current plan and 8 million shares the company's collecting on stock. But what they want to do is they implement a stock split in the form of stock dividend and then issue it basically we're at let's look at it right now so GameStop is shares outstanding is uh, 76 million let's just let's just go to Finviz let me just double check and make sure that that is the the correct okay yeah shares outstanding shares float Really, it's the the float was really going to matter because that's what's available at the market. The rest is held by insiders and and you know they've they've been buying recently. I think Cohen and a bunch of other people have been buying, so they can issue on top of the seventy five million another three hundred million and which I'm not uh, you know forgive my math of. Uh, Let's just look that up. So we'll be at, let's say they do 300 million plus, uh, we'll do 75 million. So yeah, we're at 375 million. I should just put that in there, but, and we'll do, we'll do it over three. Um, I mean, I guess they could do Minimum. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Um, let's just actually, you know what? Let's do it this way. Okay, so that'd be a seven to one. Um, It wouldn't be a three to one. That wouldn't be enough. Yeah, I mean we're looking at. I mean they could do easily do in between. I think five. <laughs> that would be about right. So probably a five to one. That's my guess. It's a five to one split. And then they'll out of that they'll that's how they'll do the the the, the dividend and however the, the mechanics are under that uh, I'm sure the short sellers will be looking at the mechanics of that because uh, how they and I don't think it, it there's no dilution to this like it's not gonna they're literally just gonna just issue more shares and they give it out in a dividend form that's the way I read it. Um, and I think they would issue 300 million, have a total of 375 million, and then do a five to one split. That would make the most sense. And then now, for every share you have, you get five shares. <laughs> and every share that this the shorters shorted, <laughs> they now have five times to deal with. <laughs> if I was a short seller, I would be. Um, I don't think I would want to go into work tomorrow. I would want to just. I think I'd just go run away. <laughs> just go I think I'll just go run and hide they're uh, they're screwed I mean this is uh, this is probably the worst thing is to have bet against a cash heavy GME is pretty cash heavy and somebody that's capable of issuing a split like that and and now and then however they issue those shares, maybe they do it over time. I don't know the mechanics. They'll have to, you know, and it might just be all at once. It might be super straightforward. On this day, we're going to vote. And then on this day, we'll do a split. You wake up the next day, the share prices decrease, there's more shares float, and you have more shares. 
everybody wins, and then the stock price skyrockets. But the the problem for the short sellers here, and I'll get into that really quick, is the share price. And we've already seen, you know, AMC went up after hours. Um, GME just blew up. It absolutely just exploded. Yeah, I mean, the high was 202 from a low of right down here at the day, end of the day. It was $163. I mean, this is, uh, I think the demand, even at this price point, for for GME is um, just just brutal, and you know don't forget a lot of the a lot of retail shares are are DRS'd. Um, so the pool of available shares to short has been decreasing over time for the short sellers on GME. Uh, GME ticker is gonna you know when it does decide to run, it's I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be absolutely mind-blowingly violent, and and part of the mechanics of it are there's just fewer shares out in the open market. Supposedly, in GME, the ticker moves much faster than an AMC does under much lower volume. You get heavy volume on GME, and it's just a monster. Um, we'll just do like a day. A one-day candle, just so it's the mechanics are easy. But yeah, like a big volume day on GME is 93 million. I mean, we've had several billion-dollar or billion share days trade on AMC with, and you get the similar price action. Um, and I'm not saying the mechanic. That's apple and orange a little bit. But um, if the demand is there, I, I mean. And, and I think that it absolutely is. I think that's going to create serious problems because eventually, I think, I think short sellers have a higher share price that they can withstand on GME because of the mechanics. But I will not be surprised if that gets hit and they don't, they're going to have to, the only way they can get out of this is to play games. Serious games. That or they're done. They're going to, they're, I mean, this, I mean, I'm not going to make any predictions, but I, this is uh, this isn't like check. This is checkmate. I don't. Yeah, I mean they've got transparency coming. Transparency's out. You know that that other stuff that that was NSCC 010 or whatever. That was the pawn shop rule. It doesn't matter. They did not get rid of transparency. They've got uh, the CAT system coming in. They've got interest rates going up, liquidity coming down. They've got to pay enormous, probably a five or six to one, maybe a seven to one higher ratio of what they were paying on on uh, the amount of their short position on GME now that they're going to have to deal with. Um, if they survive this, it's because they emptied their own wallets into this to try to stick around. Well, we're going to be dealing with a zombie, I think. They'll go into zombie mode. They'll just put all their cash into their accounts to try to survive the margin so they don't get obliterated. And then anything else that they, they're not going to, I mean, they might, they might be selling other stuff just to deal with the margin requirements just for this one stock. Uh, and that that's the thing about this is it doesn't, you don't have to, because a lot of these short sellers, if you look at what they shorted, it wasn't just meme stocks. They shorted Ocugen, 40%. They've shorted tons and tons of other stocks, heavily shorted them uh, for an event, I think, that did not happen the way that they thought it would. And now they're upside down and they're trying to play a lot of games. And, and now you have one stock that's going to create massive problems. And I think the end result is you'll see an everything squeeze in the stocks that they shorted. They will have to return the shares, and everything's going to get liquidated. And it's 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 just simply because they made a bad bet and they they stuck with it. They stuck with the bad bet is is where it's at. And they'll probably try to blame retail and all this other stuff, but retail just happened upon something they did. It's not like you know, and it's the stock market. We lose money, they lose money. We make money, they make money. 
that's all there is to it. It's not really any hard feelings. It's just, you know, we took a long position. It's something that somebody shorted, and that's just we'll just see who comes out on top. This is the this is battle of attrition at this point, uh, and the attrition side is, you know, the the longs aren't having to pay interest or <laughs> or deal with dividends on a short position. Either way, guys, uh, I hope this was helpful. I'm very interested to see what happens in the next couple of days, coming weeks. I've seen a lot of stock splits. I was in on, you know, I watched Apple, Nvidia, Tesla split. Um, and yeah, I know those are all blue chips, but there's a lot of demand for GME. Um, I just can't imagine what's going to happen to these guys. It's just, I, I, this is the, this is the reckoning here, I think. Either way, guys, wish you guys good luck. And again, not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Trade at your own risk. Thanks, guys.